Okay, guys, let's talk some history. Let's talk Ezekiel Proctor. All right, I'm going to move this thing so you can see me better. Here we go. All right, Ezekiel Proctor. Some of you guys may not know who Ezekiel Proctor was. You may have heard of the community Proctor, which was named for uh, some relatives of his. I think most of the stories say it was named after his son, Zeke Jr., instead of um, old Zeke himself, but I cannot 100% verify that. So, Zeke Proctor, interesting guy. He's most famous around here for starting a chain of events that led up to Going Snake Massacre, which happened at the Whitmire uh, Schoolhouse. We're also going to talk about that. Now, before we get into the facts and what led up to this big massacre at Going Snake, in uh, this big Going Snake Massacre, we're going to talk about some interesting stories from Ezekiel's life. So, Ezekiel, he, uh, he was kind of a character. you got to remember, some of these stories about him have been passed down. They're secondhand. They're word of mouth. It's stories his family's told. So we don't always know if these stories are 100% accurate. And as all things history related, we really want to focus on the facts. But sometimes you have to delve into the stories surrounding an event and compare it to the facts to see what makes sense. But the stories can't be quoted as true because sometimes they can be just stories. So here we go. So Zeke Jr., Ezekiel's son, told a couple of stories. He told one, and I read this in several different accounts on Ezekiel's life, so I would say it's probably true. Uh, he was coming home from a saloon one night, and he heard some lovely piano music coming out of the house. Well, the piano music stopped, and Zeke did not want it to stop. So he marched into the house where a 12-year-old girl sat playing her piano. He took his pistol out, laid it on top of the piano, and demanded that she keep playing. And she did. She played for him. So that, that was kind of an interesting story. Another one that uh, Zeke Jr. told, he said one night his dad was riding home, and he met a boy walking down the road with a... Uh, <laughs> A jug of white lightning. Ezekiel asked the boy for a drink and the boy said no don't think so no bueno and Ezekiel shot the boy and buried him somewhere. Now again I don't know how true those stories were that was quoted as coming from Ezekiel's son so we can take some of that with a grain of salt and we never know if the person who quoted the son was right or not. So you know, a couple of interesting stories I read on him. Another thing I read on Ezekiel is that he really liked to go over to uh, Cincinnati, Arkansas. Now, Cincinnati is pretty close to here. Actually, I had a friend that lived at Cincinnati, and one of my horses came from Cincinnati. It's it's close. So there was a little community there with possibly one or more saloons, and Zeke liked to go and be entertained and so a lot of times his visits to Cincinnati would end up in a big uh, saloon brawl a big fight and he would leave and they always welcomed him back and it said they welcomed him back because he was good to pay for the damages that he caused so kind of a little interesting side note on Zeke he's kind of kind of rowdy so that gives you a background story on a man that the newspapers would end up calling an outlaw and a woman killer. So let's fast forward to some facts about his life that we can verify. So let me look at my notes. He was born July 4th, 1831. His dad was a white man named William, William Proctor. His mom was a mixed Cherokee woman. I believe her name was Dicey Downing, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Pretty sure that's what it said his mom's name was. It is rumored, and again, when it's a rumor, it's not necessarily true, but there could be a grain of truth to it, to have killed 25 men. Some sources I saw said 21, so we don't know. Uh, he was seven years old on the Trail of Tears, so he was just a little guy when the Trail of Tears happened. He would have been about a first grader's age walking uh, to Indian Territory on the Trail of Tears. It's kind of crazy to think about. In 1861, he joined the Union Army, which was odd for a Cherokee because most of them fought for the Confederacy. The Confederacy promised uh, the Cherokees that they would create a 
totally separate Cherokee or Indian state for them if they if the Confederacy won. So and and not only that, but most of the uh, a big percentage of the Cherokees were slaveholders. So they actually fought for the Confederacy. So it's kind of odd to me that he joined and fought the Union for the Union. And that's going to play into his future troubles. So remember that he fought for the Union. He was slightly wounded and he returned home to farm. So let's fast forward to the events of February 1872 because it's, it's about to get real. So there's several stories as to what happened. A man named Jim Kesterson had been married to Ezekiel Proctor's sister from what the accounts say. Now, I can't 100% prove that, but that's what they say, that Jim Kesterson had been married to Ezekiel's sister. Well, Jim Kesterson leaves Ezekiel's sister to go take up with a woman named Polly Beck. Remember that, Polly Beck. Polly was a woman of mixed race, just like Ezekiel. She was um, Cherokee, but her father had been white, just like Ezekiel Proctor. And from all accounts, she was a very beautiful woman. She had been married to a man named Stephen Hildebrand, who, from what I read, died uh, pretty young in the Civil War. So she was a widow. She had either been married four or five different times after Stephen Hildebrand died in the Civil War, or she just kind of had lots of boyfriends. I'm not sure. It's kind of fuzzy on what really happened with her there. So anyway, she ends up taking up with the Jim Kesterson, who is Ezekiel's brother-in-law. Jim had been, good old Jim had been married to Zeke's wife. Well, when Jim left Zeke's wife, she, I mean, when Jim left Zeke's sister, she didn't have any way to take care of herself or the kids because back then women didn't just go out and get a job and work. So they kind of relied on a man to help take care of them. Well, she was left destitute, which meant, you know, she didn't have food. She didn't have ways to take care of her kids. And good old Jim just packed up and went to go hang out with Polly Beck, who lived over on Flint for the meal. We'll get to that. Lived over at Flint. So that kind of chapped. Ezekiel's hide. I mean, you can imagine this guy didn't do your sister right. Now you've got to kind of look after her. That that wouldn't be too good. Another reason they say that Ezekiel was mad at Jim Kesterson was because Ezekiel kind of liked old Polly Beck himself. He kind of had a crush on her. Yeah, my phone's going off. Give me two seconds. I'm going to go pause it. Hold that thought. Hold it. Okay, I'm back. So, that's another reason that old uh, Ezekiel Proctor might have had his hide chapped just a little bit. Not only did Jim leave Ezekiel's sister to go be with Polly Beck, but well, Ezekiel kind of liked Polly Beck a little bit. Kind of a little bit of a crush on her. I guess she was pretty. Kind of liked her. So that chapped his hide. And another reason they say that he might have been kind of aggravated was that Ezekiel was a member of the Kitua. Nighthawk Society. Now the Katua Nighthawk Society were very traditional and that meant that they tried to hold on to the old Cherokee way of life and the old Cherokee way of doing things and they did not approve of their Cherokee women marrying or becoming involved with a white man. So all these things are kind of brewing with Ezekiel. Some other sources say that Ezekiel was serving as some sort of law officer at the time, and old Polly Beck's cattle kept getting out on the neighbors. And so sometimes I've seen in some of the articles and the stories written about him that he was there because of complaints about her cattle was another thing. And there was one more thing. Oh, Polly Beck's family were Confederates. They had fought on the Union side. Ezekiel, I mean, yeah, they were Confederates. They had fought for the South, for the Confederacy. They were Confederates. Ezekiel had fought for the Union. So they had different wartime loyalties. So there was a lot of things brewing right there for old Ezekiel and Polly Beck and Jim Kesterson. And it was about to end up with somebody getting killed. So I'm going to stop right there. 
And if you will tune in tomorrow, I will tell you what happened with Polly Beck, and Jim Kesterson, and Ezekiel Proctor. It does not end well. So I'll see you tomorrow.